I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet That's tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please let me know if you have any difficulty from your side. Um, uh, this video is going to be about answering someone he is supposedly smart. And you know like I notice always there are some people they are really hypocrite. Uh, they like you to speak against one religion only. Like, you cannot speak against anyone, a religion they like, you know. So, if you are a person who is um, a Hindu, he think we should not speak against your belief. And yet he claimed that he is not a Hindu. This is what he claimed. I will show you his comment. And let us take this uh, count down from the screen. All right, now it's better. And by the way, later, if you want to watch the video, don't forget just to skip the first 10 minutes or I have to cut it off. It's just a way to tell people we are coming online. And because YouTube doesn't show us really, uh, don't send notification. So I think this is the best way to appear online and people will join. So we have a person who is supposedly smart and always we welcome smart people. Even they are foolish when they think they are smart. Uh, let us go to his comment. This person, he called himself the truth. He said, CP, you need to stick to Islam. Stop talking cheap chat at Hindus. That you will not allow that you will not allow to call you? Who said I don't allow to call me? Since when a Hindu he is not allowed to call me? If you are a Hindu, let me know and I will open. Uh, I don't use Skype no more, but we can go next time in the live podcast. We use Ecamm and you can call me. And then he says, let, us, let, let me make it clear. I am not a Hindu. The caste system as it has been practiced for the past 1,000 years. Actually, the caste system, it practiced for a thousand of years. And the Hindus priest, they allow it, they teach it, and they practice it. And actually, they are the one who is behind it, and the scriptures. As you keep doing this, I will show you up, I will show up Christianity. Uh, see 1.48 uh, uh, of the video, which means timing. You say the uh, argument used by Muslims to defend their belief, it was a test. And he's talking, I think, about uh, Allah, he entrusted the Jews. I never say it was a test, you are stupid. This is the Muslim said that. You are literally stupid. 
then it says you said it's total failure you ask if God knows the future so what is the point of the test I was asking the Muslim because this is his excuse I did not approve I did not approve the word test so I'm asking him if this is was a test and he is asking them to protect the gospel so what is the point of this test don't he knew do he want to protect the book or he don't want to protect the book and then he says you are very clear you say Islam is false and Allah should know the future he should know the result of the test uh, so there is no point you say he is Satan then he continue both Islam and Christianity believe in the story of Adam Allah like a trinity or like slash trinity set a test for Adam and he failed the test now apply your argument as above to show Islam is false and ask didn't Allah or Trinity know Adam would fall or would fail Hindu others see above CP has whatever like he proved Islam and Christianity to be false and satanic but just to show you how stupid you are if we go to the book of Genesis we will see that God he didn't he was not testing Adam he gave him order to obey you see test test it can be used but God will not punish you for something you did not do you did not practice yet you did not fail yet so when we speak about you know what you what, what you claim to be test you can say this story is a testing the fact it's about ordering God he gave Adam the first law he is not giving Adam a test he is giving him a law you obey you are fine you disobey you are going to die so because you are ignorant you do not know what the Bible teach you see based on what you said uh, well why God will uh, you know he sent everybody who deserve to go to hell from now he knew the future but because God is just he will not punish you for a crime you did not commit yet so this is not a test this is about disobedience there is people who obey and there is people who disobey Adam he have a free will and his free will it was a test to Adam not God testing Adam so the free will of Adam he decided to choose and if God if God he says to Adam go out of heaven before Adam commits sin Adam will not understand what I did I did nothing wrong so here you see that your ignorance that when God he gave Adam an, an order and he told him this is a tree which you cannot touch don't eat from the fruits if you do it if you do it you will face death you will face death so your understanding that God he was testing Adam is because of your foolishness I can say God is testing me now right now by many things I get uh, tempted you know I get angry uh, you know you get uh, a thought of lust in your head you know women sex uh, money you name it but because God is just he will not judge me for a crime I did not commit so when you talk, when you, when you speak about test, obviously you don't understand what test is. Secondly, the verse we were talking about in the Quran, it was about a book of God, a book God He made, and this book, a human being cannot be tested to protect it. Why? Because which a human being? Which one? Was the book given to an individual and he fall or failed the test? No. 
was the book given to one, two, two, three person? He was given to a nation. So what test is that? And who is the one who corrupt the book? And then how all the nation, they agree to corrupt the book? Have you ever heard of any belief? Doesn't matter how you think bad of them or good of them. All the nation, they agree to corrupt the book. So we were asking the Muslims, In chapter 5, verse number 44, how Allah he entrusted, he used the word trust. When God he gave Adam an order, he did not trust Adam. He gave him an order. There's no trust there. Adam is a human. God gave him an order. And he told him, either you obey or you disobey. And if you disobey, then you are going to go under the penalty, which is death. Let us go. After God, he created the earth and the heaven. And he made the garden and, uh, you know, uh, and Adam, he wa was cast of heaven. We have actually even Abraham. God, he ordered him to sacrifice his son. We can say this is a test. But God will not give Abraham what he deserved unless Abraham did what God ordered him to do. Adam, he have a free will. God, knowing the result of the test, let us say, does not change anything that I have to give him the exam. He passed the exam and then I give him the reward. And then he will understood or understand that because he, you know, passed the test, if we can call it test, as you say it, because he passed, because he did good, then Abraham became a man of God. This is have nothing to do with God knowing the future. And funny test, God, he reward you for something you did, not something you did not do. The Muslims they don't even believe that God was testing Adam. And this is shown again that you are stupid, literally. The Muslim believe in destiny, and we mentioned that in the previous video. And we mentioned it thousands of times before. In the book of Genesis, chapter number three, what God he said to Adam. Did he say to him, I'm going to test you? You have an exam you have to pass. He gave him the first law and Adam, he disobey. It's just a law. Don't eat from this tree. Do anything you want. You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. This is what, you know, Shaitan or Satan, he was tempting Adam with. You should eat, you should go, and you should, you know, why this God is saying you, uh, don't, don't uh, eat. What is that? So if we go to the previous one to see the story, how God and what God he said, God was ordering Adam. This is here the story of the creation. All right. We will see that the story of Adam creation, that God, what the Bible says that because God, he loved the world.
he sent his only begotten son. So God, he loved the world, and he knew that the world is sinful. This is what the Bible says. So knowing the future of a human being, that he is a failure, any human being, the good and the bad, does not change the fact that God, he have to give, or because he is just, he gave the human being the opportunity to be saved or to be doomed. God knowing the future does not change the fact that you have to choose. And if you call it test, and you say what the point of this test, as you say that I said in the video, I was speaking about the Quran entrusted and the, you, the word trust, and this is your foolishness again, the word trust about somebody who have a faith in somebody. And this was my argument with the Muslims. When God, he says he trusts, do he knew the future? If I trusted you, that's mean I have a good faith on you. That's mean in the moment I believe you. That's mean you did fool me. In the story of Adam and Eve, this is not what happened. All the Bible speak about God. He knows that the man is a wicked, is a wicked man, wicked man. The Bible says every human being is a sinner, all short of a glory. Every single human being is a sinner. So God knowing does not change the fact that God He gave you a chance to fix yourself, and this is the whole point of belief. Second chance. But here we are talking about somebody trusting somebody. The Muslim, he said, that this is, was a test. Actually, I can open now. Let us see. I, I usually, I move my, uh, the previous shots for yesterday into the trash in my computer. Uh, let me open it. And let us see, take this text away. Uh, let's see, since. Okay, let's see. What was the comment that Abdul he made yesterday? Now I have to restore all those images. Let us see. this book back see this one if this is the one this is not the one try the other one you see they are small and now I have to read them one by one to see which one and it's hard to read them in the trash um, let us see this one and this is another one too maybe this one Not this one too. I hope I did not delete it totally. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I could not find it. I have only one picture re left. Let us see if I put it back. Our last luck. Ah, we found it. Thank God. It's not totally gone. All right, let us put it on the screen. And then everybody will see how silly your argument is. Not my argument. 
So this is what uh, Somalia he said. He does not entrust. He does. He does entrust. Just mean you give them the responsibility between two bracket for a test, and they failed. So was my response to him? My response was to him, and the video is there. Well, God he knew the future, and God he used the wrong Arabic word, or he used the word trust. So here there is a foolishness of the language. If God is giving them a test, then he should use the word test. I will test you. But here, God, he knew the future, and he is not using the word test, he is using the word trust. So because of your ignorance and your foolishness, you hold the, 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 the tail of the, of the dog, and you think that you are holding a lion, but you are holding yourself. You cannot use the word entrust if you are testing somebody. Period. Because a trust in you mean I have faith on you. I believe in you. And trust comes from you being good. Was Allah sure that they are good? Here will come to the point of knowing the future. If Allah he knew the future, how in the world he used the word he trusted them? So when the foolish Muslim, he gave us this funny answer, we get him busted by how he used a trust, and this is a test. Trust and test is not the same. Actually, in fact, if I trust you, I will not test you. Do we agree, people? If I trust you, why I want to test you? The trust is already the trust is something given to somebody already passed a test. If there's a test, do we understand? So, anyone in the chat will speak about something out of my topic, I will block you. There's no Protestant, there's no Catholic here. Take your garbage and leave. If you are a stupid, you are trying to try, you know, the Muslim, they come here and they try to divide the Christian. There's many fools there. Catholic, Protestant, who care about this topic now? On what Catholic and Protestant? One more time, you say the word Catholic, Protestant, I will block you for eternity. I don't have time for stupid people here. Either you are coming here to listen to our topic, or you open your channel and you can talk about whatever you want. So when somebody trusts, he is not testing. Because already he trusted. And this was my point. My, my point. If he is testing, how in the world he knew the future and he is testing them and he is trusting them. All those together, they don't mix together. So your stupidity is beyond imagination. And in Christianity, we can use the word test. God, he is testing me. But not because God did not know the future. But here in this story, God, he trusted me, and then he is testing me. Trust is based on faith. And in the case of God, God, faith, is connected to his knowledge. So how God, he knew what I will do tomorrow, and then he entrusted me today. I did not fail God, actually. It is the knowledge of God failed him. Because if God have faith on me, and he entrusted me, and I did not, or I'm not worthy of the trust, that means God, he did not know the future. This is what we were talking about yesterday. And this foolish man, he came and he says what he said. Now, we, we, we are, uh, anyone have a question about this topic? So here, our topic here was not about the word trust and test. 
separated trust and test is an answer for a Muslim claim he is the one who said this was a test the word in trust coming in the meaning of test but Arabic words Arabic language is so clear you don't use such a word if you don't mean it so why Allah want to use in trust when he don't mean in trust he mean in, he mean to test and when God he order Adam he was not testing Adam he was giving Adam a law to obey and if God he knew what I will do tomorrow will not change the fact that God gave me orders to obey if I disobey then I deserve what will happen to me that's why Jesus said not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. Do we believe that God, he knew the future of those who will do the will of God and those who will not? Absolutely. So why he is saying only the one who do his will? Because simply you have to get the opportunity. You see, there's a boss is doing an interview to hire people. There's a hundred people outside. And the first, the second, the third one, the first, the, the fifth one, maybe he was really so good. The boss is already convinced he is going to hire this person. But he said, you know what? I have to give equal opportunity. Maybe I can get better some, but somebody better than him. This is a human being because he do not know that the rest of the 95 people, none of them will be better than the one who is number five. So he keep going in the interview, even though he is convinced already that the guy number five is so good for the job. He gave them equal opportunity. The interview has be, have to be done to everybody. So then when somebody, pa you know, somebody passed, he knew that he passed for why. And the one who failed, he, he say, well, I, I, I did my best and I failed. So the test in the case of God is not a test of knowing the future. It's a test of giving you opportunity to practice, to succeed or to fail. And then based on what you do, you will be judged. That's why the Bible says, from their fruits, you shall know them. So God, he gave Adam an order, a law, and Adam, he disobeyed God. Very simple. This was not a test. And if we go by this, all tests, all tests does not exist. If we go in the Bible, we, we will see that even God, he tested Abraham. But God, he knew what Abraham would do. So what the point of the test? God was testing Abraham to show Abraham that your obedience to me is what will make you my man. Why Adam will earn some titles? Because simply his fruit was good fruit and not all the time for sure. So when a person he tried to come with such a conclusion, that is because of your ignorance. Why, you know, uh, uh, why Jesus, uh, he forgives sin, yet he knew that tomorrow we will do sin again. What is the point? When he said to a man, go and your sin is forgiven, or to a woman, don't he knew that tomorrow this person will do commit sin? God is giving us a chance, second chance in our life journey. So fix your fruits, fix your ethic, Fix your prediction, work harder, and I am with you. So when he sent Adam out of heaven, God did not come to Adam and say to him, uh, you know what, I decide before I created you to send you out of, out of heaven as the same as the Muslim they believe. God, he made it clear to Adam, you disobey me. Because you disobey me, I am sending you out of heaven. Not because I was testing you.
but because you disobey me. Any person, he have, you know, uh, uh, like a wicked logic, he, will can, he can try to switch everything upside down. If you go to Genesis uh, uh, chapter 3, chapter 3, The Bible speaks about something very important. When you eat from the tree, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. This is Satan telling Adam. This is why he forbid you from eating from the tree. So it was not God testing Adam. Satan is Satan. He have a free will. He's a fallen angel. God created Satan as angel, not even as Satan. And that proved that everything you said is absolutely false. For this angel, he decided to be Satan. It's not God. He made him Satan. So Adam was just ordered not to eat from the tree. But Adam decided to throw deception and he wanted to be more powerful. Ah, so if I eat from this, so simply the, the verse here is saying that Adam was a fool. And this is goes for many of us, how many times every day, people because of their foolishness, because of their greed, because they want more, they do what is really can destroy their future and even their past. So if you eat from the tree, God said, you shall not eat of it, neither you shall touch it, lest ye die. So this was a law, it was not a test. And this is goes for everything. When God, he gave a law, God, he gave a, a Moses Ten Commandments as example. He's not testing us with the commandment. He is giving us order. It's a law. You see, when the government they make a law, is they are not testing you. This is not a test. If you think a law is a test, that is your foolishness. So God He gave Adam the only and the first law. That's it. I, I'm not asking you for anything. I'm not asking you to even to pray for me. I'm not asking you to do fasting for me. I'm not asking you to do a, a pilgrimage or, you know, or do a, a good work or plant trees in this garden or take care of the flowers or do farming so you can feed yourself. I don't want anything from you. All what I want from you, don't even touch this tree. Not only don't eat it, don't even touch it. Don't even think about it. And God, he told Adam, if you do so, you will die. This is not a test, but this is your foolishness. Now we go and we see if any other person, he have a comment. I saw one of you, he was speaking out of the topic, going back on the chat. He says, do you believe that the earth is 6,000 years old? As the Bible say, my friend, uh, you see, like you see the story in front of us in the book of Genesis. When God, he speak about his creation. Do you think really God is telling us how he created? This is a very simple way to explain to you how you came to existence. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form. But if God want to write for us how the heaven is created, we need a million, billion book 
You see, if you study like me, I study law. In order to study law, I have to study hundreds of books. And this is just a stupid law made by the man. It's just talk. Imagine we want to make a book to describe how a mosquito is made. Just a mosquito, not the universe. How many books we need to write? A doctor, he studied the eye. Just an eye. His specialty is eye. So he will be working in vision. In order to study the eye, he have to read tons of books. Each one of them maybe is a thousand, two thousand paper. This is just to describe and to explain how the eye function. So imagine if God, he wanted to explain to us how and what he created in details. How many billion book we need. So this is a very simple story about the existence, how existence came to exist, how you and me became here, how the sun, how the light, how the water, how the earth, who is the source of all of this? It is God. So if you want to take the Bible as a scientific fact, feel free. But obviously the Bible is a spiritual book, is not about science. Nothing in here is science. Because if it's science, it should be way more details. That's it. God said that be light and light was. How, when, it's, it's, there is no, that's it. God said let be light. What about now you ask me, what kind of light? Alpha, Omega, whatever, what light? So if you want to go in details and you will try to be smart, that proving that you're, you're foolishness and you don't understand that that's a, this is a book of God, not a book of science. Do you understand? This is never was a book of science. If you want to talk about science, the Christian and we as a Christian, we believe that Jesus is born of a woman. She never have a man. Would science agree with that? No science agree with this. So we will not do what the Muslim to do. The Muslim, they put their head under the sand and they say, it doesn't say that CP. This is Daif Hadith CP. It is weak Hadith CP. Christians, a believer, he will be proud of his belief and he will never care what somebody he say. I don't care if you agree or you don't agree. This is my belief. And I say to you from now, this is against science that Jesus is born from a woman, there's no, there's no man. There's no science can approve that, period. But we believe in it. So when a foolish man, he tried to compare between science and belief, that is his foolishness. And then we will find that the same atheists who don't believe in religion or faith, they have faith in a big bang. I mean, do you see the stupidity? They don't believe in God because they never saw God. They don't believe that God said, let be light and light was. In the other hand, they believe that there was a big bang and something exploded. How you, how you say, I don't have faith in God, and then you say there's something was exploded a billion, trillion years ago. How you know? You were there. You witness it. Do you have evidence? What they have is a theory. Most of the science is based on theory, not in facts. Especially when it's come to the creation. Because nothing of what they speak of, they can prove. The Big Bang is a theory. So if we go in the world of theory, then we can say, well, the Christian, they have their own theory. The atheists, they have their own theory. The Muslims, they have their own theory. But the funny is that the hypocrisy of people is beyond imagination. They speak about it as a fact. If you speak about it as a fact and you have no evidence of it, that means it is just theory. Or if you step higher spiritually, that will be called faith. I wasn't there when God he did this. You can say it might be true. You can say it might be false. 
to survive faith is called faith. And this is why we laugh at the Muslim Quran when the Quran says Allah he entrusted the Muslims, that's sorry, the Jews, to protect the book. That means he have faith and his faith is wrong. And when you have faith and your faith is wrong, that's mean you don't know the future. If I believe in you and later I discover I was wrong, this is not a test for you. That was my failure, not their failure. Do you understand, people? So when we, we were laughing yesterday at the word in trust, this was not the failure of the Jews. This was the failure of Allah. For he have faith on them, which means he believed that they are good, and this is a proof that he do not know the future. If Allah he knew the future, what is the point? As the Muslims say, this is a test. What the point of making this test? In the same time, he says he entrusted them. How you trust somebody? Do you know that he will not pass a test? Because Allah he knew the result. When God he put Adam in the heaven, he did not trust Adam. Actually, if he trusts Adam, he will not say to him, don't eat from this tree. If you trust him, that you will not do wrong. All what you need to do, he give him knowledge that this is the tree does not belong to you. This is yours, this is mine. So God, when he gave us orders, he is not short of knowledge. He has given us a chance to practice. Then we will recall obedience or not to practice. Then we will call disobedience or unbelievers. Uh, Andres, he is giving us a different definition of what science is. No problem, my friend. But you see, we need to understand that when it comes to the something, there's no proof of it. All what they have is a theories. All what they have in science. Like now, you see even those pictures, they say the, the James Webb, the satellite. As I understood that this is are not even images. There's no images. You see, they are sending you images, and they say images of uh, James Webb. In fact, it is satellite collecting data, and th this data is photoshopped by color. They re rebuild the data. They don't. There is no. They don't have a picture. It's not really a picture. I told you before the story of the microwave. The same NASA, they were making news, big news about receiving messages properly is coming from alien and etc. And every day the, the alien, they send us the same waves of message. Every day we receive it almost the same time. For many, many years, newspaper, New York Post, whatever you name it, they're talking about the amazing like discovery and then later one day the the kitchen microwave they have a microwave stop working and the messages is stopped <laughs> so employees they come like nine o'clock they start heating their sandwiches or making their tea whatever they turn the microwave on the radar receive the messages from the microwave the scientists they post the news, we receive messages from alien. When the microwave was broken, and then they need to change it, to change the microwave, the messages stop until they bought a new microwave. And the new microwave does not give the same waves. <laughs> it was a microwave. 
So their area to be to be, you know, like and the other news I saw that what they saw it's a it's a they, 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 there is a planet and they gave it a name, you know, and then it turned to be there's no planet, it's just a dust. So for years they give it a name and they consider it as something, whatever, and it turned to be by by time they discover it was just a dust. Yeah, well, this is Photoshop, my friend. What what our friend here is explaining to us is the following. I'm not a I'm not a scientist. Where is the? Uh, we take a screenshot. I know since I reformatted my computer, everything. Uh, Judge is saying, Arabian Prophet photoshopped, not photoshopped, and data is a zero 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 one zero 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 one zero zero zero, and render by simulation program. Why you need to render it by some a simulation program, and then compare to a real image? How you can compare to a real image? Do you have a real image? Let me let, let me just uh, be sure. I will do uh, a search for Prophet Google. Peace be upon him. Give me a second. I will ask Google: Is James Webb giving real pictures? Let us see. Here it says, because I remember before that NASA, they, in their website, they were talking about how they make images. It's not really a real picture. But let us see, maybe this one is different. I'm trying to find an answer. Here they are saying it is an image in this website. And they are saying the Hubble image is about 23.5 megapixel. Pointing at 32 megabyte and compressed. Well, based on this website, they are saying it's an image. Anyway, if it's an image or not, it's still a human being who is speaking about Big Bang. He's shown us his stupidity. How the little tiny human being, he come to a conclusion of something exploding when he cannot even understand what's happening. Until now, all the pictures you receive is showing you how really little you know. They don't have really knowledge. If you ask yourself, what is the what is the uh, knowledge they will have a uh, hundred years from now? You will find that what they have today is going to be laughable for what they will have in a hundred years from now. And then after one hundred years from now, they will find that they knew nothing yet. How far this universe can go? How many billion? According to their science, we are talking about billions of years, billions. So, and this is their claim, and how even you can even measure the distance in the universe if you cannot, if you do not know the end of it, if there is an end. So, science make make theories. Some theories they can come to, you know, let us say, close to to believe in, and men most of them they are not really truthful. This is why there's many theories, not even one, because if it is a fact, all scientists, they will agree upon it. There's no need to call it the, you know, theory anymore. Uh,
you know, a human being, he, you know, he come with the stupid things. And sometimes because you are not, let us say, if I am educated in the topic, I will have different view in the topic. And I believe that a lot of scientists didn't agree with NASA and they are scientists too. And you know those organizations, if you don't agree with them, they bury you. You see, if you are a person who is, have a, in the other day, we have uh, 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 David Wood, he interview before he quit YouTube, I don't know if you remember. He interviewed a guy, he is a Christian, and he is a scientist. Anyone, anyone saw that video? I was interested in this guy. You know, he don't even look like anything to be like that one. I mean, the guy who have many degrees and PhDs and, you know, science and biology and blah, 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 etc. So, this guy is, is, you can tell that this guy really is the real deal. But he don't believe in their garbage. He studied their books. He studied there in our university. He studied in, you know, he graduated. He, uh, he got all the high grade scientist he can get. He is a real scientist, not a guy in YouTube trying to make a comment. If I speak about what he knew, I would be like a kid trying to make a point which is not really close to what he knew. Or he can be look the same if he tried to speak about Islam. He would look like a stupid kid speaking about something he do not know. But this guy is really a scientist. And he don't believe in what they believe. He don't believe in the, the, the what they say that uh, you know there's no create. He believed that there's a creator. He's a scientist. But this guy, they will fight him, and he will not be able to teach what he believe in any school. You have to believe in their garbage, otherwise the gang of the atheist will bury you. You have a PhD, fine. You are a scientist, no problem. But you have to believe and you have to say what we say. Otherwise, you will not be able to, 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 to teach in a school. The only place this guy now, maybe he can teach, is a school which is run by Christians. A place where they allowed him to believe that there is a creator. This is not allowed in a government school. They will kick you out. And you know, you see we are talking about trust. Is that correct? How we knew even that NASA is receiving any images? The only answer is you trust them. Correct? What if all of this is a fraud? The American went to the moon. Some scientists, they say, the American, they never landed in the moon. Some scientists, they say, no, we did. The Muslims say, when Armstrong, he arrived to the moon, he heard the Adhan. He heard Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, but we knew that in the space voice cannot travel. So if I am in the moon and you are next to me and you speak, I will not be able to hear you. This is the foolish of the Muslim, foolishness of the Muslims that Armstrong, he went there, he heard the Adhan, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. But voice cannot transform in the empty space for voice is an airwave not like the radio your voice is a vibration is not a radio so like when when the hadith says that allah he come down every third part of the night and he go where to the lowest heaven and in the lowest heaven 
Allah, he says, who is praying for me? Who is, you know, supplicating to me? So if we want to take it scientifically, this is funny and this is foolish for because the space is empty and the voice cannot reach. And if Allah is speaking by radio wave, which can pass that space, then Allah, he forgot that our ears cannot receive radio. So, you know, I wanted to make this video to make you understand that when God, when we as a Christian, we use the word testing. And the, the, the guy who said, well, if you are saying that why Allah will test somebody if he knew the answer already, that is your foolishness. This, I did not, I, this is not what my point. My point was Allah, he used the word trust. In the same time, the Muslim, he said, this was a, 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 a test. So Allah, he knew the future and Allah, he trusts them. And now Allah, he will receive the result. Trust and test, they don't match together. And there's no point of this test for he is in you in the future. And this is his book. And when he trusted them, that's mean test is not the case. For no point of it. Number one, already I trusted them. Number two, I know the future. Number three, it's my book, not their book. The book of God is not the book of man. When you say, the Torah. The Torah is not my book. The Gospel is not my book. This is the book of God. Belong to God. Especially the part where God is speaking. So when God, He entrusted a bunch of people to protect His book, that is not a test, for He used already the word trust. Test in the meaning of believe is you earning your place so god he tested abraham but not because he want to see if abraham is bad or good he knew who was abraham he knew already who was abraham but god he gave us a reward so we understand that because we pass the choice of yes or no not God is testing me, for he do not know. So all tests, there's no point of them. If the test is made, to know. But all tests, there's a point of them. If the point of test is to receive the penalty you deserve, or the reward you deserve. Oh, uh, anyone have other question? You see, in the Muslim, they don't believe that when God, he sent Adam out of heaven, he sent him out of heaven because Adam did bad. No. Allah, he sent Adam out of heaven because Allah, he planned to Adam to do bad. This is not Christianity. In Christianity, God, he gave a law to obey, not a test. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Adam is speaking to uh, Moses and Adam supposed to debate him, but don't ask questions how Moses and how in the world Moses he met with Adam. So Adam questioned by Moses, uh, Moses argued with him <laughs> saying, because of you, we are out of the heaven. We are living in this misery. Adam replied to Moses saying to him, you are the one who Allah, he spoke to directly. Yet you blame me for a thing 
which Allah had ordained ordained for me before he created me so it was a fate Christianity and Islam they don't believe in the same thing so when this idiot he said he called himself the truth he said Muslims and Christians let us go to back to the, the comment he said Muslim and Christians and the funny he used the word Trinity this is how stupid he is he says both Islam and Christianity believe in the story of Adam no that's not true you are a stupid you are a donkey because the story of Adam of the Muslims have nothing to do with the story of Adam in Christianity Adam in Islam was doing a plan for Allah so when he committed a sin it was a fate Adam in Christianity he was a disobedience not somebody obeying God based on destiny Adam he was obeying God actually he did not disobey because this was the plan guys do you understand and as you see this is Sahih they cannot say this is weak and this is rejected and this is not accepted this is was the plan Adam and Moses held at uh, like a dispute. Moses said etc because of you we are of heaven you cause us to come out of paradise Adam he says to Moses it's you who speak to Allah yet you blame me for doing deed which Allah had decreed had decreed that I should. Do you see the word should? It's not maybe, it's not maybe I do it, maybe I will not, it's up to me, that I should do 40 years before he created me. So when this idiot, he said what he said, is showing us again that he is ignorant and he is a silly person. He is just a teenage, he do not know what he's talking about. And actually a teenage is smarter than you. If you watch my videos and thousands of them and you keep coming here and yet you say what you just said, that means you are already stupid. Christian and Muslim don't believe in the same Adam. In fact, the Muslim, they believe that each time Eve, she give a child, the child die. And then Satan, he told Eve, give him my name. Give him my name and he will live. So imagine the Muslim they believe that the first child of Adam was Satan. Can you believe it? The first child given to Adam, it's not what the Muslim they claim. Do you see the stupidity of religion? So how they say that uh, Cain and Abel and what this is, this is, a, this is a messed up story. If we go in the Hadith, let me see if I can find it in English. Here we go. And the Muslim, they will say to you, Daif, Daif, anything is embarrassment, they will call it Daif. The Prophet of Allah said, when Hawa became a Britnet, Iblis came to her, and her children will not live after birth. Do you see it? And he said, name him Abdul Harith. Do you see the word Abdul? Abdul means slave. Abdullah, slave of Allah. Abdul Harith or Al Harith is a slave of Satan. So she named him Abdul Harith and he lived. Muslims, how stupid your prophet is. Based on this, the children of Adam, who you Muslim you claim, Cain and Abel, they never exist because they died when they are infant. And the only one who lived 
is his name is Abdul Harith. And he was a slave of Shaitan. So do you see that we don't have the same story? Muhammad is a fraud. Nothing of what he say have to do with anything we believe in. And Adam was not tested by God in Islam. Adam was doing the plan of Allah and actually he was totally obedient. As we showed him that Adam was doing what is a decree. He didn't have a choice. In fact, even when Muslim they commit adultery, adultery is not a choice. In Islam, it's a decree, it's a fate. And we don't believe in such a garbage. According to Muhammad, Allah has the fixed very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit. Do you see it? It's not a choice. You see the Muslim, they make a speech, brothers, sisters, we have to obey Allah. We have all this garbage, doesn't match. So when we speak about the verse that Allah, he trusted the Jews, when everything is destiny, is a joke. Which means even when the Jews, they did commit breaking the law, it was not really their fault. It was a decree. When you do fornication, it's not your fault. It was a decree. If you remember, we played the video before of Mifti Mink. He said the caliphate, you can search for it, Mifti Mink destiny. A caliphate, he catch a thief. They brought a thief for him. And the thief, he said, while you are going to punish me for a sin, it is in my destiny to commit. The caliphate, according to Mifti Mink, he said, the caliphate was speeding him in thinking. He's faster. He's smarter. He said, well, you are right. It was your destiny to commit sin, and it was my destiny to kill you or to punish you. <laughs> and then you ask yourself, so what's the point of the sin thing? If everything is a destiny, the guy he's taking off his pant, the woman she is taking off her panty, they are doing boom, boom, it turned to be, it's not a fornication. It was a bornication made by Allah. The Bornocation God from Burkina Faso, Allah, He decide that you have to do this. It's not your choice. You cannot fight it. You cannot stop it. A Muslim woman, and I can show you the video in YouTube, in Arabic, she called the Sheikh and she asked him, I am now over 30 and I am afraid I'm not going to get married. In the Middle East, if you are 30, you are grandmother now. So the Sheikh, he said to her, Sister, don't worry, be happy. The Prophet said, مَكْتُوبٌ عَلَى كُلِّ فَرْجٍ إِسْمُنَا كِحِهِ It is written in every vagina. The name of the man who will if it. So he said, if it's written for you that you will be effed, you will be effed. <laughs> it's a decree. Can you believe it? And because I know that the Muslim, they will say, this is not the rule. This is false CP. It doesn't say that CP. Let us show them the reference. Or some reference. I found the video actually. 
This is the video in, in Facebook. كل فرج مكتوب عليه اسم اسم ناكحه. It's written in every vagina the name of the one who will eat it. You don't speak Arabic, so I will not waste my time. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to find some reference. Let us see. So we can laugh. I can show the shake and that's it, you know, this, the shake is saying it in the video. Let us see. <clears throat> Actually, I found already some books, but I don't want to show something. The, the majority of Muslims, they will not. Uh, they will say we don't agree with this. Hmm. Actually, I was able to find even more videos. Look. All those shakes, they are saying the same thing. If I translate to Google, every vagina, the, the translation is coming fu uh, funny. Every vagina has married women name written. The translation is funny. So every vagina, it's written on it, the one who will if it. And those are the shakes, one after one. It is written there, brother. And then the Muslim, they will say to you, to, to avoid the embarrassment, they say, this is not, uh, not uh, valid. We don't agree with it. Is it valid or not valid? Let us see. This is Islam that web saying, and look, when the Muslim even they try to refute and they try to fix your understanding, they even make it more stupid. So here the guy is saying that this is not an accurate hadith. And Allah, he said, this is the accurate one. Allah, he wrote, the fate of every creature before he created everything by 50,000 years. Let us take this one, which the Muslim, they are saying it is accurate. But the fate of every creature is his fate, the bad and the good. And we were supported with more hadith. So let us go here. Allah. Hmm. Read carefully and you tell me how this is will agree or this approve the other hadith. It says here that the messenger of Allah says, God recorded the fate, not the news. You see, that's different. Like God, he knew what people would do. I have to agree with that. But here is speaking about the fate. He wrote your fate, what you would do. And the fate of everyone is what bad and what good will do. Anything, bad or good, it is not your choice. It's a destiny. And here you will notice that Muhammad, because he's a liar, he said 50,000 years before Allah, he created us, correct? But we just heard Muhammad saying that Allah, he decided the destiny of Adam 40 years before he created him. Do you see why we say Muhammad is a fraud? 
this guy, he cannot repeat, the, the, even the, his own lie, he cannot repeat the same lie twice. How it is 50,000 years in one hadith, and that is sahih. And how it is 40 years, and this is sahih. Do you see why we say stupidity? A Muslim saying, this is a fabricated hadith. No problem. What about this one? Is this one fabricated? It is you Muslim, your website, you just quote this one to prove the other one wrong, this one prove the other one right. What about this hadith? That fornication is done by destiny. This is Sahih Muslim. Is that is that the if? Read carefully. It says, "Verily, Allah has fixed the very portion." So, how you say the hadith written in the man written in the vagina is wrong? When this hadith saying that, this hadith saying that it is going to be done. You like it or not? For Allah, He wrote it. A fixed portion. Do you see it? Is this one daif too? What about the Quran? <laughs> Are you going to say the Quran now is weak? The Quran is weak. Everything is weak in this religion. It's a weak religion. When Muslims they fight, do they fight because they have a choice? No. It was a fate made by Allah. And the Muslim translate here, fitting is ob obligatory, but the fact it says kutiba, not obligatory. It was a fate, it was a destiny. This is why when a Muslim, he kills somebody, he shouts saying, it's not me who killed you. It's not me who slaughtered you. It's not me who shot you. It was Allah. Read carefully. Chapter 8, verse number 17, it says, You kill them not, but Allah killed them. You throw not at them your arrow, but Allah throw at them. Why? Because it's destiny. Do you see it? So even when you go to war, and you are a Muslim and you shoot somebody, you did not shoot him. You did not kill him. It was Allah who killed him. But for sure this is stupid. Your short time. Why Allah don't do it without you? If he can do it. So you slow them not, it was Allah. You throw not, it was Allah. Uh, Mr. Anitab, why you don't answer us? Here we go. Give us the answer instead of making... Uh, faces funny faces give us the answer are you against what the prophet said that destiny of adam and destiny of all mankind was written before we are created give us the answer so giving us faces is that a true hadith saying that allah he has, has the fixed very portion of adultery, which a man will indulge in, every individual, every man. So instead of being like a teenage, give us a face, give us the answer. I don't mind to hear it. Shall I play for you, Mufti Mink? When the guy, he said to the caliphate, why you are going to punish me for a sin is written in my fate? 
So why he's a thief? And then Mufti Mink, actually, he said, by the way, he got a point, good point there. Honestly, this is what he said. He got a good point there. 